So we're getting ready to take some zooplankton samples. So we want to set up our equipment first. Our falcon cubes, 150ml for the larger sample and 150ml for the smaller fraction of the sample. It's a good thing to prepare the day before labelling them up for all the ponds we will actually take them on to label the 100 tubes. Uh, we need a funnel to wash things into those tubes, some borehole water to wash things into the tubes. Um, this time we don't want our O water because the animals are being kept in it and they don't like the super low iron water. So um, we take the, um, the borehole water from the tap next to the shed, so it's just on the outside of the shed. And then our filters, the 30 micrometer one and the 100 micrometer one. 100 on top of 30, important, we've done this the wrong way around before. And then you don't get a useful sample because obviously you want the larger fraction first and stuff that goes through the 100 micrometer um, sample still, but then will be caught by the 30 micrometer um, filter is our smaller fraction of the sample. So we get these stacked on top of each other and they, it's quite good to just balance them on the edge of these steps here to pour things through from the bucket where the sample will be collected first. So we've got buckets that have a mark inside for where there's 10 litres. 10 litres from the pond is our normal zooplankton sample. So we put that next to the pond. Then we take our zooplankton sample, this plastic tube, a tennis ball that we've got for each of the ponds. Get the hold of the string at the end. And then we stick this, put the ball on the side so the water can go in. Stick it in all the way to the bottom so we collect Daphnia through the whole way of the water column. And you pull on the string so it closes at the bottom. The tennis ball shuts the bottom mostly. There will be some dripping as we pull it up. That's why it's good to have the bucket closed. And then just put it over and release it by letting go of the string and everything will go in here. And we do that um, a couple of times in each of the, um, the cage zones and a few times outside. So sort of sampling a bit around the whole pond and getting a, a mixed sample of what's around everywhere until we're at the 10 litre mark in the bucket. So we try and take some samples from the middle there. We have to try and get to the bottom outside of the heating element. So you to be careful when pushing this down to not be too quick and harsh and damage anything. Close now, maybe one more along the edge. Now this is a sample with a lot of duckweed in, which we don't want to clog up all our new plankton. So we will fish that off the top. That's not actually what we want. Um, same with large amounts of algae like this, they just clog up the filters. So we try and gently remove those, being careful to not remove Daphnia with it, so when it's a larger amount, you sort of need to wash it out a little bit, make sure any Daphnia can escape into the water to actually be sampled before it's being thrown back in the pond. Stuff at the bottom are proper yields from the duckweed. The really is doing well. Yeah, there's other bits floating around here that will clog up our sample, like these little um, root bits of the duckweed, but there's just nothing we can do about that. Can't remove everything without removing what we actually want to sample as well.
All right, so that's good enough. We can start filtering this now. We put it on filters. Slowly start pouring it through the top. Got to go slowly because the filters will sort of fill up and then take some time to actually let all the water through. Especially as there will be more things being collected in the filters clogging up the way for the water. The one that clogs up first is always the bottom one with the finer mesh. So you have to kind of keep checking that that's not just running over and all the water coming out in between them rather than running through the filter. But you'll see that, um, you can kind of see on the top filter when the water is standing all the way up from the lower filter to the top filter. Um, the colour of the top filter basically changes. Pour this through slowly and then occasionally if the bottom filter gets completely stuck we can remove the top filter making sure there's no water standing there right, that's still running through and sort of swirl the water inside the bottom one to unclog it a little bit and allow the water to run through it still. Doesn't seem to be happening for this one. just going through. They really vary in how much time it takes just put everything the water to go through. And then this is mostly duckweed propagules this time but there's also Daphnia still in here so we want to give it a little rinse in the end. Make sure we get those last bits and any Daphnia that might have been stuck at the bottom of this. Okay, so the sample ready. Now we can Get ready for collecting the larger fraction from the top here. Um, so we take this filter and sort of wash things down in it to one edge first. 50 ml really isn't all that much, so you need to sort of make your sample concentrate in a corner of this filter before washing it in. Otherwise, this will overflow immediately. These PE bottles are quite good for that, so just washing things down into a corner. It's harder the more algae and duckweed there are, sort of clogging this up. Right, this is reasonably concentrated in the corner. Then we take our Vulcan tube, put the filter on top so to collect things properly in here. This is easier with a um, Vulcan tube holder, I just don't have them on here right now, so I'll just stick them between my knees. But I can recommend having a holder to make this easier. much on point, up to 50 now here. Remove that. We've got about two and a half mil space which is great to give a little rinse to this filter and you can see there's a couple of Daphnia stuck still. So we've washed them in and the sample is full. Um, we usually actually aim to only fill this to 42.5 or 45 mil because we want to add glycerol in the lab before freezing it down. Um, but sometimes, as was the case here, um, you just have to fill it all the way to wash out everything into this. In which case, once we get to the lab, we'll let this settle a bit and then remove some liquid while being careful not to remove animals um, before we add the glycerol. 
because at the moment there wouldn't be space for that. And that's it. Um, if we do the same thing for the smaller fraction of the sample then, wash it out into the smaller tube. And that would be the zooplankton samples for one point.